Hi guys, my name is Parag Paul and welcome back in lecture number 3 of module 1. In this video, I am going to discuss about few building plans related things, the load calculations and the rest of the things. Okay, let's get started. So, as in last two lectures, what we discussed related to the building plan, the different kind of the orientations, the limit states. Okay, but you know that before analysis and design, what you have to do is you need to do the proper grid to grid analysis. Now, what is a grid to grid, -to -grid analysis? Grid to grid analysis means the proper calculation of the column structure. Okay, like where you need to situate the column. Is the column really required at this particular place or not? That particular things as identify from the grid pattern. Okay, so grid pattern nothing but during the layout, what you draw the layout on a green field on a side at that time you fit the perks, right? That perks to perks distance that time you draw you use one thread, okay, to perks to perks drawn of the column that combination or crossing of the rows or crossing of that particular perks to each other that particular point makes a column structure like you can see if i draw perks over here i draw perks over here and here and here also and when i draw the line from this i i join uh, these two perks with the one thread or one uh, one you know one line so at that time you can get to know at what location you need to provide the column understand so it is very important to identify where you need to situate the column after that only we can start analyzing design without that you cannot do it means proper planning is really required for the proper building planning and designing right now so last in last lecture at last particular portion i discussed about the how to fix column position yes it is really important because we are Generally at corners, we need to create the different kind of orientations, different kind of the column sizes because the load acting on that particular column is very big. Okay, it may be a wind load, it may be the dead load also because at one side portion, if you are if, if you are looking for that column, okay, the column is only two sided open and two two sided locked if it is at corner, right? Okay, because this kind of the things and this kind of different load conditions occur on a corner column. That's why the fixed column position at corner is very, very important. We are, we always avoid the long beam. Okay, because if you are, if you are considering the long beam, what does it mean? It means you need, you need to increase the depth. As you are avoiding the long beam, it means your quantity decrease. Okay, but you are dealing with the shrinkage, you are dealing with the bending movement, remember. Okay, so always try to avoid the long beam. It means you need to provide the column distances not more than, okay, 4 meter, not more than 5 meter. Okay, try to withstand within this limit. Okay, then and only then it will be very good for you. Okay, so if the client, if the architecture appearance you want to increase, so in that time you should look for the strengthening or different kind of material. Then and only then it could be a, a major portion. Right. If you want to, if you don't want to provide a much, much more column, but you want to, you know, provide the aesthetic view for a building at that time, you should focus on the column positions. Now, third one is at major beam junction. Yes, there is a T beam junction. So we call the secondary beam. Okay. Actually, what exactly the primary beam, what it's to the primary beam transfer the load to the column and the secondary beam like cantilever beam. Okay, so cantilever beam what it did like cantilever beam transfer the load to the primary load. Okay, now the as a, as I told you right now the aesthetic point of view. So yes, we also look the column position in term of the aesthetic point of view. Now you can see here the column size is different. Here the column size is different. Here column size is different. Why? Okay here column is different circular column we uh, provide so definitely this column what i provided it's for aesthetic uh, aesthetic view the rest what we provided it's based on their you know relative in how it is fixed here you can see the column it's square but in conjunction with we are providing the rectangular column over here at very short distance so that's why this particular column situated over here 
okay maybe the wind intensity also may lack over there right now here also you can see okay here i am trying to connect all the beams at one single point due to which we can transfer the proper load to the bottom that is the main conjunction that is the main motive over here okay here we are getting the t junctions that's why we are looking for it for the major appearance but you can see these particular two things this particular two major columns at the position so we just provided one single column in conjunction with this beam to avoid the maximum failure at this point understand you can see the column portion like this okay why we are providing this kind of column rectangular column at the corner side because if we are getting the wind load that wind load should not bombard on whole the side you know the how stress is created okay if this portion consider as a column one side and this portion column as a another side the stresses okay stresses created how the load upon area if your load is less okay okay the stresses stresses created when if your stresses are very high what does it means the stresses is always always directly proportional to the sorry inversely proportional to the area okay stresses is inversely proportional to the area so it means the maximum stresses it means the low area the maximum area it means the low stresses understand it is very basic simple logic of the stress strain analysis understand so that's the particular reason why we are providing the maximum area to avoid the stresses right now after that how to fix column sizes it is one of the major questions we have always because the formwork availability is specifically in case of water tank okay what we provide the formwork the major formwork we provide in case of the water tank but the normal formwork and the suitability of formwork for a column is as usual okay in the rectangular pattern or the square pattern so the major sizes are by 230 by 300 mm 230 by 300 mm 230 by 300 mm okay so actually i forgot to wrote the next few values sorry for that it is 230 by 400 230 by 600 okay please note down it is okay but remember one thing as per the new draft code of is 13920 the least dimension of column should not be less than 300 mm so whatever the dimension you are going to provide the longitude only okay that cannot be less than 300 mm why because the thickness of the wall is 300 mm okay not less than that if your wall is outer one understand now second one is a tentative load coming from the column yes it is very important if you are looking for a column designing the wall load approximately 11.733 kN per meter it is acting on a per meter of the wall load okay so whenever you are going to assign any wall load you need to look for it for this value then self weight of the beam yes if your beam size is 230 by 450 then your self weight of the beam which is a dead load it is 2.59 kN per meter then intensity of slab if your slab is having the 150 mm that means 0.15 meter is the thickness then your intensity of slab acting on a or as a dead load which should be like this 3.75 kN per meter square the floor finish it would be like 1 kN per meter square lie load would be 3 kN per meter square now let's consider by 3 by 3 meter area which will be supported by the column so the total load on column will be 155.67 kN okay so this particular load calculations we will lead, we will discuss during our whole course it will be very good okay to understand and to learn right now if my size of proposed column okay okay my size of proposed column is 230 by 500 or 300 by 400 whatever it is but we will calculate the load properly now as per the size conditions yes definitely there is a different different size of conditions sometime you need to require the larger section sometime you require the smaller section these two both of the sections like you can see the larger section depend upon the aesthetic view the smaller section also depend upon the aesthetic view but due to the restriction of area is one of the main concern okay now but always this particular kind look for the architectural purpose okay now how to fix the size of beam how we can fix the size of beam that is one of the important one so there is some deflection criteria we have there is a generally width 230 mm but maybe more than due to the depth restriction or shear demand if you have maximum if your bending stress is more you need to increase the depth 
okay you cannot increase the width you need to increase the depth of the beam okay so we have one clause from the is 456 23.2.1 which listed that the vertical deflection limit may generally the be assumed to be satisfied provided that the span to depth ratio are not greater than the value obtained below so if your basic value of span to the effect to depth ratio for span up to 10 meter then your cantilever slab should be 7 it means 7 meter the restrictions we have more than 7 meter then increase the depth okay if you are simply supported okay getting 20 meter if 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 crossing the 20 meter just increase the depth if it is continuous one if it is 26 under the 26 meter it's okay if it is more than 26 meter increase the depth right thumb rule we have which is it may vary accordingly to the building type whatever the native experience you use so uh, these things we will discuss afterward because this is not a time to discuss okay so now this is one of the important parameter what i am showing right now these things a b c d and 1 to 3 is called as a grid pattern so you can see this is your first perk this is another perk you join this perk to here to here directly through a, a thread and that perk that thread crossing this a grid b grid c grid so this cross make an impression over here that impression what does it mean it means at that point the column will transfer their load to the bottom okay now due to this whatever the pcc bay, lay bed you drawn at the bottom accordingly you can just check the eccentricity of that particular column understand as i told you earlier also there is a, some eccentricity limitations we have that we need to follow understand so we will discuss how we can do all these things now the grouping and nomenclature of column yes it is very important to understand or when you are doing the reinforcement detailing it is very important to understand the grouping and nomenclature of the column okay now yes you can see the grouping or nomenclature of the beam also given by fb2 fb1 pb2 okay like floor beam 1 floor beam 2 floor beam 3 like this understand now this kind of reinforcement we will get at the end of the analysis and end of the design okay so we can we will get to know what exactly we are doing right understand so there is a different kind of load we have what kind of load we are assigning on a building that come under the various different kind like dead load we are assigned we are assigning the lie load okay we are assigning the floor finish wall load roof treatment roof life okay so always remember the minimum magnitude for this the dead load is having we cannot consider the minimum magnitude whatever the low whatever the structure you created that particular structure length into breadth into depth or height will consider as a dead one but the lie load it could be the magnitude of the 3 kiloton per meter square the floor finish is having the minimum magnitude of 1 kiloton per meter square wall load is having minimum magnitude of 11.73 roof treatment is having 1 kiloton per meter square and roof live load is having magnitude of 1.5 kiloton per meter square okay now you can see as per the figure number 3.4 from the is code 456-2000 here one way slab and two way slab distribution we have what does it means it means the if you are assigning the wall load as a uniformly distributed load okay so 0 0.23 into 1 into 3 minus 0 0.45 into 20 which is a density this is a uh, th thickness okay or you can you can see this is a thickness this is the unit length we consider 3 minus 0 0.45 what does it mean it means the overall depth okay the effective one into density so you got the external load wall intensity as a 11.73 so what we will do we will put this load on the beam on both the side that particular loading will create this kind of distribution so what i did i provided this because always we provide the wall at the above the beam not below the beam uh, sorry not uh, not on a slab we never provide we provide the you uh, the provide the wall construction above the beam right so the wall load per meter okay is 11.73 kilometer so we assign on a to b b to d d to c and c to a so in this condition our load distribution in one way slab will be like this okay 
this is by ly and this is our lx so if you need to determine the beam ab to beam cd this particular load formula will help you to identify this kind of structure when we analyze in i tab you will get this kind of loading so understand if you got this kind of structure it means that is a one way slab if you got this kind of structure it means it is a two way slab always remember in two way slab there is a two way distribution the distribution is in trapezoidal manner and the rectangular manner in one way slab we got the distribution in only single manner so that's that is the main of the main reason why we used to call as like this because in one way slab the our ly is more than the lx okay these are the particular thing okay we have to follow the major rules understand now after that here this particular uh, you know the scenario we will discuss afterward this is not right time to discuss because if i discuss right now you got you may get confused now if i have slab size of 4 by 5 meter and length of the beam is 5 meter then ordinate into load how we can calculate it's based on this particular formula okay at particular distance like at zero distance what will be your load at 2 meter distance what will be your load at 3 meter distance what will be your load and at 5 meter what will be your load this particular calculation we will discuss during our main designing okay like this also so thank you over here in this video model number 1 is completed tomorrow i'll provide you the next second model okay where we discuss about the analysis and design patterns okay and then we start the etap model okay thank you have a nice day bye bye